This is one chapter of the 12, separated and posted. It was taken from my main one hour and a half tutorial, hyphen documentary video, to make it easier for crafters to use. If you don't mind watching the whole thing, then click on the link in the description and the pinned comment. Chapter 10. Vital Decorations. The Skin and Feathers of the Hawk. Capítulo décimo. Decoraciones importantes. La piel y las pulmas del halcón. A bird does not hold its feathers just because they're beautiful. Every single one of them is precisely designed by the creator to have a real function. We are about to do the same for our hawk bow to make it able to fly. It is time to wrap our handle with a material that can hold the bamboo together and provide enough protection like a shield, but also make it comfortable to hold. Leather. Such a soft material prevents any damage on the handle and arrows when they slide through there especially the fletching. We will need to cut a belt shape to wrap it around. Let it be two fingers wide. For me it is four centimeters slash an inch and a half. I would suggest you cut it a little less than a meter long. 85 centimeters or 33 inches should be enough. You can use anything that resembles leather, folded fabric, denim and so on. You can even wrap rope around it. If you don't care about the aesthetics and you just want it to be practical, then use electrical tape. I'll repeat myself and say that leather is the best option. Glue will be used and we need to work fast. So we should understand what we'll do first. Place the shaft in front of you horizontally. Pass the belt from top to bottom behind the bow and pull its tip up in front of you. It doesn't matter what side you pick to do this wrap. I decided to go from left to right. As we face the pulled up strap, we will turn it to a 45 degrees angle facing left. We will super glue its right corner that stands on top exactly on the border between the handle and the tied rope. Here is the point where super glue and rubber adhesive give the best results. They chemically react with one another and completely dry up in a second as soon as you apply pressure. If the starting point is correctly secured, then the entire wrap will be solid. The thickness of the strap gives us the right angle to work with. Wet the entire handle with glue. Pull down the strap to tighten it. Step on your starting point. Do not leave any gaps between the rope and the tape. To do that, make sure that the left side of your strap steps exactly in the middle of the glued corner, starting from its top. Now the leather holds itself and you can wrap the entire length fast. Pro tip! You can glue the edges before overlapping them, but it's not necessary. Cover the entire length and use the two glues again around the finishing border line. Squeeze it and let it dry. Take a sharp blade and carefully slice both sides all the way around to separate the extending leather from the handle and the tied ropes. Be careful not to slice the tape or ropes beneath the leather. You should slice halfway deep the leather and then lift it up to slice it all the way around. Pull it from one side as if you want to tear it apart and work it step by step. I sealed the edges with super glue again to make the handle immortal. I want to match the original colors and blend them together. This bow is based on the colors of a red tail hawk. It combines light and dark brown, yellow and orange. Arizona soil colors for a camouflaged bow. I got some copper colored wool spray and a plastic bag. I will not completely cover the bow, but I will take advantage of its colored glue properties. Find a spot that you don't care if it gets any paint on it and start giving short spills around one spot. While it's still wet, use that simple plastic bag or a glove to rub the area and spread the paint. This process dulls the shiny effect and only ends up mixing the colors together, but also creates a fire and sun resistance compound. What happens when we rub the paint towards both directions is that it shoves it in the tiny corners shaped by the overlapping scotch tape. This way it becomes completely waterproof to the level where you can even dive with your bow. It also prevents the glue of the tape to melt and spill out during summer. You can use it on the rope bonds too. It softly glues together all fibers without taking away their elasticity. 
This prevents the ropes from getting scratches that would cause fibers to come off. Do the same thing for the entire bow. I did the same thing for my bright orange string. It dulls its bright color and makes it come closer to the rest of the soil hues, but also makes it tough and durable. To paint this way your string, you can curl it into a small mass, place it inside a plastic bag and spray it in there. The paint will flood all sides and not a single drop goes to waste because you can take advantage of the wet walls of the bag. Grab the bag from the outside and press it on the rope. Rub it across its length to spread out the wet paint sitting on the inside. If you haven't placed the string on the bow already, then you can skip this step for later. While the string is still wet, string it on the bow and let it dry this way. You have applied tension on its fibers and the paint seals them together. To string it, you will use the same forces as before, but this time you will place down the side with the permanent knot. Hold the other end of the bow with one hand and with the other one hold the string. Put your thumb in the loop and pull it up to lift the bow. Check if the string has been wrapped around the shaft. If it has, then rotate it around to release it. You want the length of the string to be free. Place the one end down to the ground. Hold the other side and start applying force to the middle of the handle with your knee. Do it slowly as if you want to barely reach the needed length for the string to be placed on. Remember, you need to place your knee exactly on the middle. It is very easy for the inexperienced to underestimate how much they are bending their bow far beyond its limits. Hold the top of your loop with the tips of your index, thumb and middle fingers. Pull the string to keep it straight and try to place it on top of the bamboo end. Bend the bow until you can barely pass it over. Guide the loop on its proper place and let go of the bow. 10 minutes are enough for the sprayed string to dry out. On one of my other bows I used golden spray paint. It works and looks like hay. You can pat some of the paint on the handle to mix the dark brown with the rest of the bow. I want to cover the ropes beyond the border of the handle with fur. It can be natural or even synthetic, whatever you can find. A simple way to make your own fur is to take a rope line, tie short ropes all across with two strands being left on both sides and then untangle each one of them. Trim the fibers at your desired length. Push the knots together and you can wrap your furry rope around your desired spot. To not get confused, do your length measurements on fur by using the clean backside. When you cut your strap, pull softly all the hair to clean it from the chopped off tufts. I wanted to cover the entire space between the handle ropes and the next top, but you can stay on the first ropes if you want. It's up to you. I ended up with a long furry belt to work with. There are many ways to place it on the bow, but I went with the simplest one. Super glue. I started by making a single line that matched the width of the fur. That's my starting point. I pressed the fur and waited for it to dry. Careful, fur and super glue react fast together and create chemical heat. Use a glove or avoid contact with your skin. I continued gluing and applying until I reached the starting point. With your scissors, cut the remaining belt. Leave a little extra fur to glue and overlap the starting point. Apply pressure and twist the hair towards the starting point. Finish both sides. Cut two small pieces, use super glue on the knots of the string and place the furry pieces around both sides. Fur is your bow's silencer. It is placed on key spots to greatly reduce the sound produced by your shot and make you stealthy. Silent killer. Cut two thin leather straps about one finger wide and 30 centimeters or 12 inches long. Cut all four edges to be pointy. Place them on the edge of the fur decorations, on the farthest side from the handle. Adjust the two ends of each strap to hang at the same length on the opposite side of the string and make a firm knot. Secure it with only a drop of super glue. They should hang on the front exactly where the arrow will be facing towards. Make one more long strap like that, but let the edge be square this time. Go on each and every rope bond and glue a ring around them. Once you make a full circle, glue and overlap the starting point a little bit. With your blade, slice that bulged end to make the shape gradient. Wet the spot with super glue and with that process you have created a shield around the ropes responsible for holding your bow's shape. You don't have to completely cover the bonds. This angle is enough to protect them. Also, it's better to have a visual at the vital bonds and know if one of them needs to be replaced in time. That's your hawk's skin. 
Find some wooden or bone beads of any color you prefer. Any crafting shop has them, but you can also cut short bamboo pieces, smooth out their edges, and push out the foam in the center with a toothpick. You just made some cool looking beads. Burn the tip of the rope to compress it into a needle shape to pass it through the beads. Keep adding beads to reach the amount it takes to complete a ring that matches the border between the handle leather and the first. Adjust the beaded rope on the correct spot and make a simple knot facing the string side. Then wrap it around both sides while you cross over the beaded cord to hold it in place. I'm wrapping it around some hair and the leather edge on purpose. I'm making a web with all of the decorations holding each other and the bow becomes one solid piece. End up on the first knot and do a double knot there. Cut and burn the leftover threads, press them on the knot and you're all done. This is your bow's cross guard. It protects your hand and your fingers can feel them and know where the handle is located without having to look down. There is also a very important function for it, but I will wait before explaining it, because it works only when all decorations are placed on. I'm a perfectionist, so I want to cover all imperfections. It's not only about aesthetics though, but also about some extra protection. The muscles of the hawk bow are held together by the tendons and nerves. That's what the rope bonds are for. So I'm wrapping some more colored threads from both sides. If something sharp slides on the shaft, it will be stopped by the decorative threads without reaching the holding bonds. One final step and our hawk bow is ready. Weave two thin ropes 30 cm slash 12 inches long. We will make four hanging jewels. Our hawk needs wings. I will be using four of my red tail hawk feathers. I picked up those that started getting dissolved by bacteria. Apparently, I didn't take good care of them, but no worries. I can process them to be healthy and useful once again. I used alcohol to purify them and stop the decay. I'm cutting them now into smaller shapes. I'm taking off all the ruined edges and I'm focusing on the base and center where the structure of the feather is the toughest. I ended up with four identical feathers in shape, wideness and length. Let them be 10 cm slash 4 inches long. Or if you want to stick with the body measurements, make them be another 12. I don't want them to be longer, because they will hang on my handle and they will get in the way. Get 4 beads of your choice and let's assemble the jewels. Tie them on the bow the same way you tied the two thin leather straps. Tie them next to the leather knots or on them directly. Their ends should hang on the same spot as the leather ones. Pass the beads through the ropes and get the feathers. If they don't fit directly in the bead holes, then use some pliers to crush and fold the bottom side of their shafts. You made them pointy like nails and they can fit in. Push them down until their bottoms come out from the other side. Hold with one hand that extended bottom and with the other one, the rope. Use the two opposite forces to slide the bead and feather lower on the rope until the leather straps and the feather jewels match each other in length or it's close enough. Bend the rope to reach the feather's bottom and cut it at its base. Shove a toothpick to jam everything together tight and break it to leave its tip inside the hole. Use a drop of super glue and the jewel will be sealed. Cut the tips of the hanging ropes next to the feathers and unravel them into fibers. Let them be two thirds of the feather's length. Now the feather jewels and the leather straps are your wind indicators. You can tell by watching them move where the wind is coming from or how strong it is. The feather ones will move even if it's just a breeze. If you see the heavy leather ones move, then you know the wind is strong and you need to lean your shots appropriately. With all decorations in place, we have achieved the following attributes. Incoming sharp objects have many obstacles that will stop them while they slide on the shaft before they can ever reach your hand. Especially the hanging straps and jewels. Their physics cause the blade to get tangled and get stuck on them. Decorations can be replaced, your hand cannot. Remember how I shoot my arrows? I let them slide on the shaft and reach the V-shape in the middle, formed by the bow and my hand. With this order of decorations, my arrows bounce perfectly in place each and every time. This level of stability ensures rapid and accurate shots.